Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. We have an amazing show for everybody today. What do we have, Crystal? Indeed, we do a lot of big political news this morning, especially regarding our former president, Trump. Um, first of all, a special counsel announced to investigate whether he committed any crimes and is going to be indicted. We'll get into all of that also. He has been allowed back on Twitter. Now he's saying he's not going to go back mm. on Twitter. We'll see if he can really, yeah, we'll see. really hold down on yeah. that one. A little skeptical. Uh, so what could that mean for 2024? We also have new details about the new Democratic leadership in the House. Looks a lot like the old Democratic leadership in the House. Uh, at the same time, apparently the Department of Justice under the Biden administration is actually investigating Live Nation, that is the parent company of Ticketmaster. Um, this comes, of course, after the whole Taylor Swift mm -hmm. debacle, but apparently the investigation predates that. So we'll get into all of that as well. And a pretty remarkable moment on CNBC as you had a uh, gigantic investor melting down over the Fed's actions and telling them they need to stop. So we will talk about all of that. Uh, but before we get to any of that, live show. Live show. We are coming to New York and to Boston. That's right. Links are going to be down in the description. We've got a great show planned for all of you. Back-to-back -back shows from new in New York and in Boston. Lots of people buying tickets. We're going to have some fun guests in the crowd. A little teaser mm -hmm. for those who uh, come. You might recognize a few faces. That being said, uh, go ahead and buy those tickets. They've been selling quite well, and we really like to have sold out shows back to back nights. It's re really appreciate you guys coming. We have learned a lot of lessons from Atlanta and from Chicago and how we can fuse kind of the best of both worlds. And I think the premiums in particular will really enjoy it. Reminder to the lifetime members, you guys can go and buy VIP tickets. We will reimburse you. Just forward us this receipt. Reimbursement will come uh, two weeks or so after the show. Yep. Should be a fun time. We try to make it very participatory. So the audience is engaging, mm -hmm. answering questions, getting involved, all that good stuff. So please come. If you are able, we would love to see your beautiful faces there. All right. Let's get into what is the very latest with former President Trump. So now that he has announced officially he is running once again, third time around, uh, for President of the United States, Attorney General Merrick Garland has announced that he is appointing a special counsel in order to investigate whether Trump should be indicted for any of the potential crimes that he has committed. Here's a little bit of what Merrick Garland had to say. Based on recent developments, including the former president's announcement that he is a candidate for president in the next election and the sitting president's stated intention to be a candidate as well, I have concluded that it is in the public interest to appoint a special counsel. The investigation into whether any person or entity unlawfully interfered with the transfer of power following the 2020 presidential election or with the certification of the Electoral College vote held on or about January 6. This does not include prosecutions that are currently pending in the District of Columbia or future investigations and prosecutions of individuals for offenses committed while they were physically present on the Capitol grounds on January 6. The special counsel will also conduct the investigation involving classified documents and other presidential records, as well as the possible dis obstruction of that investigation. So I know we are all well-schooled at this point in what a special counsel is after the whole Mueller situation, but just as a reminder, um, Justice Department regulations allow for them to appoint a special counsel in extraordinary circumstances, specifically when there may be conflict of interest. Of course, Merrick Garland pointing here to the fact that Trump is running for election now, so there could be seen as a political conflict of interest. I think this is also a, an attempt to make it appear like there's more of an arm's length distance. Is anyone going to really buy that? Of course not. I mean, you know, it's a it's a very tricky, complicated situation when you have the current administration investigating the prior administration and you have the two of them set to go head to head in a presidential right. contest once again. So there is no doubt about it. This is very politically fraught. Merrick Garland clearly feeling that and having planned in advance for the eventuality of Trump running once again. Um, what he's saying here is that what this uh, special counsel will look into is both the situation with the classified documents at Mar-a-Lago and also the like fake electors mm -hmm. scheme. So those are the two pieces that they will be taking a look at. Um, the person that he has appointed in particular is a dude by the name of Jack Smith. Let's go ahead and put this up on the screen a little bit about his bio. Uh, New York Times dug into his uh, very interesting, actually, career. So he ran for a while the Department of Justice's public integrity section. And as you go down the list of cases that he's involved was involved with, some of them very famous. Uh, so he was involved with uh, trying John Edwards unsuccessfully on campaign finance finance violations. Uh, he was involved in the Bob McDonald. I don't know if you guys remember that one. Uh, the former governor of Virginia 
again, campaign finance violations. He was actually found guilty, and then the Supreme Court overturned it. He's sort of been criticized in both directions of being too aggressive uh, in the case of John Edwards in particular, but then also being not aggressive enough, uh, letting, and you know, in the opinion of some, letting some politicians off the hook right after he came into that uh, leadership role at DOJ's public integrity, integrity section. He also was involved in trying people for war crimes at The Hague. That was a significant part of his career as well. In fact, I think that's what he is doing most recently. So, um, you know, in terms of they interviewed a few people People who know him and are familiar with his work, what they said sort of consistently is that he moves cases, he gets things done. One person said there's no mystery here. He's a hardworking, smart person who knows how to move cases. That's who he is. He comes in and gets things done. And so I guess, Sagar, you know, to the extent we can read the tea leaves here, it seems like the idea is this is someone who moves things along quickly. He's not going to dilly-dally. And, you know, time is kind of of the essence as we are already 2024 is already upon us. Yeah, I mean, it's just deja vu. It's like every single election. First, what, we had the Comey investigation into Hillary Clinton. Then we had to deal with the Mueller investigation and what that ended up being. Now we're dealing with this one. On this one, I just don't know. Like, And I also don't even know if his background matters as much as Mueller's did necessarily. Because on this one, a lot of the facts are actually quite clear. There was classified information. It was held at Mar-a-Lago. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and as you and I have pointed out here, in some cases, in the way that you read the law, it doesn't even necessarily matter what the motivation was. That being said- Right, or whether the, the documents were technically classified. Even whether the documents were technically classified or not. And then the exact classification scheme through which they went. Right now, apparently, this was from the Washington Post last week, investigators believe that it was Trump's ego, not money, as Trump's motive on classified papers. Surprise, surprise. But the problem, yeah, I know, shocker. You could have <laughs> not have predicted that from the beginning. However, as we pointed out, your motivation um, for committing this violation does not actually necessarily matter. And then that leads to the question then of possible indictment. What exactly and how the clear cut the facts are, whether they have cooperators inside of Trump's team. We seem to have some indication of that, whether that even if you do have the fall woman in this case of Trump's lawyer who had certified or told the FBI that these documents had been returned, if Trump then they have evidence and you know it may not be all that hard to prove given the level of surveillance or whatever they had the former president under to prove that he actually tried to knowingly circumvent that. This seems to be a very, very clear cut case yeah. based upon the fact that we know them True. right now. I mean, yeah. there could be things, you know, happening that we have no idea. But I haven't yet seen the like hagiographic hey, effort to point Jack Smith as the new Robert Mueller. Maybe they learned their lesson. Maybe the Washington <laughs> Post won't release a graphic novel on the history of Jack Smith. Although arguably, you know, he has a much easier case before him whenever he's looking into Donald Trump I this think, time. I think that's right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's that's the thing is like last time with Russia Gate, there really was no there there. I mean, here there is obviously there there. Right. Anybody else, this is an open and shut case. There's not even a debate. Yeah. They're indicted. They're probably already in prison, right? Um, it's just because of the political complexity of this being the former president who is once again running for the office as president of the United States. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, clearly Merrick Garland here, again, this is an attempt to have an arm's length distance. Does this make it more or less likely that Trump gets indicted? I mean, I still would probably bet on Trump ending up being indicted. And this yes. is an attempt to make it as sort of like clean an indictment as possible. But we'll ultimately see. I mean, these are people who are very uh, Merrick Garland tends to be very risk averse. The Department of Justice in general tends to be very risk averse, um, you know, very nervous about doing anything that has this sort of like overt direct political overtones. They understand what the uh, Republicans are going to say about this. That is direct political weaponization of the Department of Justice. So, you know, do those things scare them off of a case that is like there is obviously a case for an indictment here? Ultimately, we'll see uh, President, former President Trump already reacting to the appointment of the special counsel. Let's take a listen to what he had to say. Before we begin, I want to address the appalling announcement today by the egregiously corrupt Biden administration and their weaponized Department of Justice. Would you like me to talk about that, Larry? Would you like me to talk about that? This horrendous abuse of power is the latest in a long series of witch hunts. We started a long time ago. I thought the investigation with the document hoax was dying or dead or over, and the investigation into January 6th in my very peaceful and patriotic speech, remember? Peaceful and patriotically was dead, especially after the record-setting 40-point loss of Liz Cheney in the great state of Wyoming. I thought it was dead. I thought that put the final nail in the coffin, only to find out that the corrupt and highly political Justice Department 
just appointed a super radical left special counsel, better referred to as a special prosecutor to start the process all over again. We thought it was just about dead. Felt a lot more like uh, yeah. Trump there than his announcement yeah. speech, right? That's the Trump that we know well yes, uh, from indeed. our years covering the man. Indeed. Yeah, I mean, you know, in a lot of ways, you could see then that the word special counsel has now become so overtly politicized with a lot. Of, I'm not saying necessarily they would have ever believed it, but given what happened with Russiagate, a lot of the credibility for anybody who is even remotely skeptical is going to exist, you know, given the fallout from that investigation. The Trump team, from what I've seen, says that they will not cooperate at all with the mm -hmm. special counsel. That's an interesting lesson because Trump uh, long thought that if he just cooperated with Mueller, the whole thing would go away. And then he was like, no, now, you know, the witch hunt. That's why he ended up firing a couple of the lawyers who he had working for him, Ty Cobb, you know, others who had a different strategy. And they ultimately regretted ever having uh, cooperated with Mueller and his team at all. So this time you're going to see a much more confrontational approach. Again, though, the facts are just inherently different. Like with Russiagate, like it wasn't true. With this one, it seemed, I mean, by his own admission, it was kind of true. It yeah. really only comes to a matter of how you interpret classification law, of which the Trump administration argued that even though Trump could tweet that something has been declassified, unless it has gone through formal declassification process, it is not regarded as declassified by the government. So look, I don't know. You know, on the Justice Department and all of that, they have very little credibility, I think, with the eyes of a lot of people who are Republicans already, given what this is, you know, given the cult of personality aspect. I, I really don't know how exactly this one's going to play out. I mean, I personally, I think you probably agree, is just like, I just want speed. Like, the, the yeah. long and the drawn out, like, Mueller's looking into this, Mueller's looking into that, like, this person has been called as a witness, that and all that. It just, it was so bad for the country. So like, I would just rather it come to a, let's get it in court. Yeah. You know, let's put the facts in, go it for a judge and the Americans can make up their mind well ahead of 2024. Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, I wish they would have done it before the midterms before he announced. I mean, I know sure. it would have been yeah. probably difficult given the timeline, but that would have ultimately been better even if they were concerned about how it might play into the midterms. Ultimately, Trump wasn't on the ballot in the midterms, uh -huh. at least not technically. So um, even though a lot of people did vote with him in mind. Um, the other question, and we can move on to the, the next part now is, is he going to have the unanimous cover from Republican Party elites that he did in the Mueller investigation? Um, and this isn't so much a question of, like we're saying, there's a lot more there there with this one, but it's also a question of uh, his perceived weakness in the party at this point. Hey guys, ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now, and Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah, we rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just want to give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us. And if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent, working only for you.